Hello and welcome to Flory Models, another classic kit review for you. So today we've got Monogram's B25H Mitchell in 148 scale. Now this kit's been around since 1977. The last T-Art time we've actually seen this one is Ravel of Germany, reboxed it in 2013. You might remember they did the Red Bull version and it was all sort of very highly polished. Uh, that was this kit. So yeah, definitely showing its age, but if you speak to anybody really, uh, 48 scale in this type, the H, uh, the sort of, you know, the one with the turret right at the front here, in 48 scale, this is it. This is the kit to go for. So we thought we'd have a look because Matt's planning on actually building this one very soon. So down in front, you can see we've got the actual lovely box art. And again, it's an actual model, which is something that we've actually done. It says molded in color, which usually scares me to death when they used to say that. We've got some built up pictures. So again, nice interior we've got down in there. We're hoping we've even got the crew. The decals, let's face it, I don't think they're gonna be living at this point, but that's uh, not a problem because there's plenty of aftermarket. Kit number for this one is 5500. And again, we've got another picture down there on the back as well. So, opening up the box, as you can imagine, this is clearly second hand, so it, uh, it's been around the block a few times. We have uh, some quite badly deteriorated and I don't think any amount of time on a windowsill is ever going to uh, you know clear that and I have to say one of the big things that comes up people say about oh well the decal's going to be ruined of course they are that just goes without saying go online aftermarket there's a ton of aftermarket decals for them I wouldn't even entertain trying to resurrect these or get these to go again because unless you really are a martyr then um, you know it's not worth all the pain and effort that's going to go into it so just saying Okay, down in front, we've got uh, a little booklet. And again, nice little bit of work on here. And the diorama is by uh, Shepherd Payne. So it's one of his, bit of a classic. And again, very nice. And then you've got a few bits of details down in here as well. So it's talking about those areas. All right, I'm hopeful that the main instructions are in here. And then we are greeted by some clear parts which to be honest, look really, really good. A monogram back in the day, the clear parts were always very, very good. Then we've got the sprues. And again, everything's still on the sprues. Raised detail, as you might imagine, but uh, that's very nice in there. So we've got one sprue there. We've got the second sprue, oh, bits falling off. Uh, as you can see down in here, that's very nice indeed. We've got the fuselage and again, full detail on the inside, which is something we don't see these days. So we'll have a look at that properly in a minute. Then we've got some more of the detail bits. And again, always make sure you keep an eye out for any loose parts coming off because let's face it, they do tend to do it. We've got a little bit of damage on the sprue as well, but that's not a problem. All right, so again, we've got some of the interesting parts down in there. Down in here, so we've got full uh, you know, detail on the bulkheads. And again, nice touch. We've actually got the crew. Let's say we'll look closer in a second. Some loose parts, so we'll keep them nice and safe. And we pop the box out of the way. The instructions, as you can see, are, oh, it's gonna be a giant sheet, I think. It is, okay. It's gonna be clever to uh, get this all in camera. But again, there we go. So we're on to these one big old jumbo sheets. All right, so starting over here, we can see we're talking all of that internal detail. So we've got various areas all going down in there as well. We've got some of the pins, which are obviously going to locate some of these in there. All right, so we've got all of those going through. It's got color callouts right the way through as well. So that's quite nice. We've got the tail section down in here being done. Obviously, we've got the guns, depending on if you're going to have it as a full strafer with the guns on the side or just the single. All right, then moving over, we've got all the different bits down in here. So it's got actually telling you what to do. So it's saying about wall number 39 to bulkhead number 26. So that's quite a nice thing. It's got almost like a checklist way of putting it together. So we've got all of those going down in there. And again, you've got little bits of detail pointing out what you need to do. Over on here, you've got normal with B25s. We've got the nose wheel being fitted very early, but to be honest, they're like that as of today. And then down in here, we've got more bits going in in here. So there's more details being added. We've got the cannon being fitted down underneath there. And then again, for the other side depending what you're doing. Wing spars, we've got nice big wing spars in the well, so that means it'll also hopefully get nice good alignment with the actual wings. And again, talking about covering and painting up all the details down there. Then we are over to six, 
Uh, up here, working down the back end, so we've got the sort of tail end Charlie, uh, the ammunition uh, crates for those ones, and then obviously the sights and various things being fitted down in there. There's those spars coming out, and then obviously getting the alignment correct onto the actual wings. Bombay doors being fitted, uh, main, uh, the actual nose wheel door, things like that being fitted down onto there as well. And then we've got the engine. So again, nice detail on the engine on here. So we've got that forward engine of that one. I take it to Wasp uh, as well. So those being fitted down into there, and then and uh, missed a few, but you know what I mean. Uh, so we've got some more up here, talking about the bombs and the alignment of how they go on to the actual racks on the side, fitting those down inside, and then we're over to here with the tailplane. So you've got tailplanes being fitted, glass work on the top, and then the actual boot for the rear again. So nice stuff. Engines, got the engines being fitted down onto the underside of the wings. Then we've got the main gear being fitted on. And then over here on 12, it's talking about what type of cannon. So if you're going with the single and the twins and the various things, so that's those being fitted down in there. That's 12, right, okay. So then we were over to here, 13. Down in here, 15, we've got the side uh, guns being fitted down into there as well. And another little antenna or insignia color one being fitted down in here. So we've got some raised details. And then obviously we've got the actual top turret as well. The all important top turret being fitted down into there as well and then a case of getting all the clear parts on so we've actually got the nose system we've got the actual top part going on there and then we've actually got the guns in the nose and then you can have it obviously displayed open or closed as well so some nice touches down in there your marking things uh, which i did see on here there we go uh, are over here as well so again, it's funny how this goes, because then 18, you've got the boarding ladder and boarding step. So that's being fitted down on there, which is a nice touch, which in theory, if it's a tail sitter as well, you could glue that, which is, I know, a little bit of a hack. But for people who have uh, trouble with tail sitters, just glue it. And then obviously we've got the actual uh, pito being fitted to the wing section down on there. Markings, you can see the difference in the color for the paper. Uh, you can see down in here, but again, there's lots of aftermarket. So honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. And, uh, there you go so plenty of detail this is what we're talking about with these older kits the amount of detail that is down in there um, is absolutely fantastic okay so uh, what we do we'll run slightly backwards in this so I'm a bit worried about knocking bits off the sprue and we want to keep them tight so if we move over to the close-up you can see some really nice good crisp details like you know we've got like a crew chief here type of wave in we've got like a pilot uh, stood there as well and again the brown doesn't or browny greeny color doesn't do it any favors but the detail is actually all there the engines are really nice I think by the time they got some silver on there and uh, you dry brush it and maybe a wash and things like that would be very nice the wheels good gorgeous detail and again like we were saying a lot of these kits especially the monogram ones had terrific detail in the insides but you are going to get a little spattering really of ejector pins so you know it depends if you're just going to live with them you're going to fill them or try and remove them all right so and again and we've got some of the uh, boxes, the various things. We've got the engine shrouds, the cowlings, looking very nice as well. Looks like we've got the cow flaps in the closed position. Um, but again, that's not really a problem. And obviously we've got these bumps on here, which are going to fit down onto the engines as well. The props look really nice. And we don't have any sink marks or any problems on those at all. So that's pretty damn good. Over on the, the next sprue here, as you can see, we've got lots of details going down in here. Some of these parts are very loose, so we've just got to be a little bit careful. And again, we've got the control yokes in the various areas. I think that's the pilot's or is that the gunner's seat with the armour plating? All the different areas. We've got the bomb racks, we've got the guns down in there. And as you can see, there isn't actually a great deal of sink marks or flash on this. It's like the world took a step backwards. Uh, instrument panel and again I know this colour is not doing any favours but you've got lovely detail down in there so that's no problem we've got some of the bulkheads there that's pretty darn good we've got the guns the pito we've got the gear got the nose wheel and again really very nice we've got that giant cannon being fitted there and that nose section now it's got a little bit of scuff damage in that but that's easy to polish out that's not a problem at all and again on the blind side looking very good Indeed. Again, you've got a little bit of ejector pins to go on here, but it just depends on, you know, how far you want to go with it, especially with some of this detail because it is on the inside. Okay, so we have the, the wing sections. Oh, my little things are popping off here. I'm hoping they're not needed. I'll keep all the parts. Uh, but there we go. So we've got the actual the wings down in here. So again, it's all raised, but it's really nice and sharp. 
you know the, these raised panel lines are probably the sharpest I've actually seen a raised panel line to be so again it's one of those issues is you're going to rescribe it which is fine or you're going to live with it and make it work in some ways it'd be lovely to leave it in there and make this work but they're very very fine very delicate very nicely done the texture down in here on the ailerons as well it's got that real fabricy look to it the Bombay, and I know technically it's got a little bit of sinkage on there. You can probably see it catching it in the light. I don't know how many of that, how much of that will show through. And then obviously it's because of this in here, but you could always go along with the stressed skin effect with that and just leave it. I think people worry about that way too much. And again, the actual engines, and um, we've got these sort of two piece tails. So it's uh, one piece, obviously with the rudders aren't poseable, but you could cut them and go. But again, this fabric texture, down in here is absolutely fantastic and you've got raised detail where you want it as well so that's really nice so the riveting is raised on this and again those engines are very very nice indeed so yeah then we've got pretty much the same on the other side uh, as you can see on for this one and we've obviously got the tails for those areas and again some really nice details down in all of that so no problem at all all right, and then obviously we've got the main fuselage, and it's a big old thing in 48 scale, as you can see, we're down in here. Without a nose on or anything, this part's just over 30 centimeters on its own. So by the time you've got the bits and pieces on here, you know, you're gonna be looking about 36 centimeters. So uh, it is quite a, a large aircraft. And again, if we look at the start of the tail here, work our way forward, nice, good, clean, crisp, panel lines again there's a little bit of scuffing on this kit because it's been out of the bag and rolling around a box for a few years these armor panels on the side you can see are raised very nicely done highlight of the kit though is this so you've got fully detailed interior and to be honest with you i thought it's going to have more ejector pins in this so you've got you know one down in here well that one doesn't count because it's not going to be seen the cockpit one there isn't one in there so that's quite handy you've got a little tiny one down in here you've got one obviously back here and this further one but honestly you're not going to see any of them so uh, yeah, it's a really, really nice kit. There's not much to worry about in there. The other highlight of the kit clearly is the clear parts. So as you can see, the clear parts are absolutely gorgeous. It was something that Monogram did really, really well, that their clear parts were always crystal clear. If you compare them with anything we were doing in the 70s in the UK, yeah. They're a little bit hazy, shall we say. Bathroom window uh, springs to mind. This is complex shapes as well. And to mold them just in one like that is actually really, really nice as well. And again, they've got a nice, good, sharp edge to them where they're supposed to. And obviously the ones which internal details don't. So it's on the actual inside as well. So you've got molding from both sides. So yeah, really nice. But a couple of little bits that fell off. So these are just the am am ammunition shoots. So we got those, and obviously we've got some of the parts here. This is again for the Top Gunner, I think. That's his little rotator. And obviously we've got the gear, which again, really nice. The other thing you notice as well, there isn't much burring on the kit. You know, the actual monogram as well, they used to get it on the sprues, and I can feel it actually on the sprue. <laughs> it's got loads of burring, but the parts, they don't. So it's a bit odd how they managed to get away with that. Really, really nice. Again, this is something where this kit stands up today with anything that's out there yes it's raised details but when you see the sharpness of these raised details honestly they are the sharpest raised details i think i've ever seen on any kit they are absolutely fantastic it wouldn't take much on something like a bomber like this to actually rescribe it either so if you did fancy just taking them away you could use them as a template then sand them off afterwards and it'd be absolutely fine and again because it's they're so fine to remove them wouldn't take much you're just talking a quick couple of passes with a sander uh, and you'll be good to go it's nice it's flat as well so you can take the parts off you know if you've got your things down in here they're easy to rescribe it's not like it's going to be over complex curves and stuff like that as well so if you do might don't mind you rescribing things like that go for it personally though i'd probably leave it because they are absolutely perfect they are beautiful it's a great kit it's a shame that it hasn't been around now for the last nine years hopefully Ravel will rebox this one and we can see it in more modern boxings and again you can probably go out and get that red bull version and then get aftermarket decals if you wanted to and go along that route the world is crying out for a really nice 48 scale uh, b25h in the meantime we've got this one and actually there's nothing wrong with it 